What's up guys? Welcome back to Project Time Garage. Well, we got some snow and ice here in Tennessee. About a half inch of ice to be uh, exact. Uh, really unusual for us. So I figured this would be a really good time to get uh, get the old 7.3 there behind me out and uh, take a ride down some back roads. Let's just see what it looks like. So uh, come on. Also guys, we have a lot of new projects coming up on this channel, a lot of really cool stuff coming up on this channel. So if, um, if you want to kind of know about some of this stuff, get a little insider information before, uh, way before it ever happens, in fact a lot of times before it's ever even filmed, go check us out over on Instagram, at Project Time Garage, and you'll be in the know way before everybody else. Anyway, back to the show. Hold it here. I cycle those plugs a couple of times this morning. So I figured I would uh, take you guys for a quick ride in, uh, in what we refer to as Project Freedom. I know a lot of you are pretty new to the channel and if you haven't caught up on it, I gave a brief introduction to it. I'll link that up here uh, in one of my earlier videos. But uh, just figured I would give everybody a, uh, a ride along in it. A nice snowy day here in Tennessee, which is unusual. and. Uh, give everybody the backstory on this thing and uh, bring everybody up to speed on where we are today with it. So this is Project Freedom. It's a 2000 Ford. It's an F-250 with 7.3 diesel in it. Uh, I originally bought this truck to flip, to sell. Um, I bought it out of Kentucky in a non-running condition. Uh, supposedly the engine was bad in it. I know I refer to that all the time. So um, the price was two thousand bucks, and that's pretty hard to ignore for you know a four-wheel drive seven-point-three truck. So I went ahead and got my primary diesel truck, an O3 F350, hooked the trailer up went to Kentucky, I was pretty much had already decided I was going to buy the truck, no matter what. Um, got there, looked it over, put a set of jumper cables on it, um, spun it over, and it sounded 
healthy. It, it, it had compression on all the cylinders, and that was really the big thing. I figured, you know, if this thing's got all all of its compression, then it can't be that big of a deal, right? So I bought the truck. Uh, got it home, got it in the garage, and I noticed that every time I turned the key on, the fuel pump would prime and, and diesel fuel would pour out the front of the engine, right? So um, I figured initially, I thought, well, gosh, this is going to be easy. It's a, you know, maybe a fuel bowl issue or a split fuel line or whatever. So I started taking all this stuff off of here and, and still can't find the leak. It looks like it's coming right above the flywheel, uh, the, the crank pulley, the flywheel damper. <laughs> so um, I just started pulling everything off the front of it. I took the radiator out, took the shroud, fan, um, all the things off the front of the engine where I could get my big head up under there from the bottom and look. So I've got my head sticking up through the bottom of this thing. I got my wife in here cycling the key on and off, on and off, watching the diesel fuel literally just pour in streams. And then I found it. Every time the fuel rail would pressurize, it would push tons and tons of diesel fuel out the weep hole of the water pump. That's unusual, right? That's something you don't see every day. So, uh, kind of got horrified for a second all kinds of bad thoughts went through my head you know split block um, voodoo whatever this is so um, pull the water pump off of it and realize that when you kick the key on water was coming out of the water passage on the driver's side of the head the water passage that goes through the head um, you know and it's common with all the injectors to cool the injectors um, then I realized, oh, okay, we've got injector cup problems, serious injector cup problems, more bigger problems than I've ever seen. The amount of fuel that was coming out of this thing, it, it's, it was like there was just a, a wide open hose in there and it was just gushing out. So uh, I thought, okay, set of injector cups, we're good to go. I should have, I should have uh, realized when I pulled the passenger side valve cover off that there was going to be more to the story because there always is more to the story in this case uh i pulled uh i pulled the valve cover off and realized that the valve cover gasket had literally melted and ran down the side of of my uh of my engine so this thing had been hot been really hot um So pull the injectors, went ahead and slipped some injector cups in it. Um, I, I will say this also, um, all but two cups came out on the injectors. They'd completely slipped. All the, uh, the uh, compound had completely failed. Again, sound like it'd been kind of hot. So um, went ahead, put a set of injector cups in it. At the time, I didn't realize, I, I, I didn't have my thinking cap on. So, um, just kind of jumped in there, slammed it back together, just wanted to see what we had. Um, fired it up, and it, it sort of ran. It ran on six or seven cylinders. It ran enough that I could, I could hear that the engine sounded viable. Injector buzz test re revealed that the majority of the injectors were bad. Three of them didn't even didn't even make any noise at all they were completely and totally done for cooked cooked so um, I was sure enough of it at that point I went ahead and put in the order for a set of, uh, of replacement injectors from uh, full force uh, stock injectors nothing nothing crazy no overages none of that put a set of injectors in it started ran pretty good uh, ran better, didn't run great, but it ran better uh, enough where I could drive the thing up and down the road and realize that it was missing some other stuff. Uh, a lot of it led me down the road of electronics. So first thing I pulled off was the the uh, camshaft position sensor. It's in the front of the engine down there on the bottom, and you know generally it's an unbolt the little thing and just pop it right out of there, right? Well, not on this one. I'm literally down here trying to pry the thing out of the engine block and it's making all this cracking and popping noise sounded ultra crunchy 
finally got the thing out and it came out in little pieces. It came out in pieces because as opposed to being round and stuck in the block, it was deformed and kind of saggy on the back where it had been so hot. All right. Also, uh, that's the second hot thing that, that kind of maybe made me think, hey, this thing's, this thing's been overheated, right? Like really, really overheated. So uh, in tearing it down, I realized that the, the temperature sending unit was completely unhooked. And whenever you try to hook it up, it just pegs the gauge hot. So the thing was grounded internally. It was no good. At that point, I kind of put two and two together and realized that that's, that's what happened to this truck completely. The temperature sending unit evidently failed, pegged the gauge. It got unhooked for whatever reason, didn't get replaced or fixed. It looks like, I, I don't know which came first, chicken or the egg thing. I would assume that it, it started leaking fuel into the, uh, into the coolant and maybe that made the water pump finally go out, uh, something. Either way, the water pump went out to the point where it, it leaked all this coolant out through the weep hole. So definitely, definitely a bad water pump. My guess is the previous owner didn't realize that. Oh, main road's pretty clear. I don't guess I need four wheel drive at this point, do I? So I guess the uh, previous owner didn't realize that it was low on coolant and uh, proceeded to overheat it, dramatically overheat it, smoke it even. And uh, I think that's what led to the injector cups ultimately failing. So um, at that point, I kind of decided that, well, I like the truck well enough that I'm not gonna try to flip it. Uh, I was still in it really reasonably, like I said, 2,000 bucks. Had about, um, I think about 1,300 bucks worth of injectors, uh, a few hundred bucks worth of other parts. So, you know, I'm in this thing for 3,500 bucks, right? And it's a, it's a four wheel drive diesel truck. So, decided I'm gonna keep this truck I'm going to use it as my uh, like knock around truck. Um, at the time, I have or still have a '74 uh, Ford F100 on 35s that I spent an entire summer going through and most of a winter uh, redoing and making into kind of a woods truck. Uh, I'll put that on the channel at some point. Anyway, long story short, I decided that that, that this truck's going to replace that truck because it was way more capable, way more capable in terms of what it can haul, uh, more capable in, in, in terms of, you know, getting out on the highway and driving highway speeds. So uh, that, was, that was my decision there. So anyway, this was gonna be a better truck all the way around. Once I made my decision that, that I'm gonna keep the truck, I was all in at that point. It was gonna get an everything that it needed to be reliable, like, turn the key, drive it to the moon if you needed to and back reliably in the middle of the night, you know, Siberian cold or whatever. I needed it to be reliable. So at that point I replaced everything. I mean, every sensor you could possibly replace on the thing, exhaust pack, pressure sensor, tube, um, ICP, IPR, I told you about the crank position sensor all the U-joints, all the fluids, all the everything. It got all of it. Uh, all Ford slash Navstar parts. I didn't use anything aftermarket with the exception of the injectors and um, later on the turbo. Get into that in a second. Got it all put together, but I still had this issue where I had tons and tons of EGTs and low power. So I'm looking for boost leaks and ended up found, finding that the, the up pipes had never been replaced. And like most, they were garbage and leaking. So set of up pipes on it, figured that was gonna fix the issue. It didn't. I actually made my EGTs worse and I gained a little bit of power, but not much. So I'm still on the hunt for what's wrong. And I'm riding down the road one day and I'm watching my high pressure oil pump. And I realized that it has no problem building two 2,300 pounds or so of pressure. But if you floor it, all that pressure, all that pressure would bleed off 
and leave you with about 700 pounds under full demand. So I'm like, gosh, I wonder if the high pressure oil pump's bad on this truck. So order a high pressure oil pump from Full Force, put it in there, and that absolutely woke it up. It was a completely different truck. EGTs were good, tons of power, um, everything that you ever wanted in a pickup and more. So I'm like, okay, I got this thing pretty well sorted out now. I feel better about it. Um, so I started driving it for all of the rough and dirty work, right? I, I was taking it to Kentucky to our farm, driving it at night. Dri I mean, just really using it a lot whenever I needed, you know, a work truck. So I'm on my way back from Kentucky one night. It's 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night. And I keep hearing this weird squealing noise. Um, that directly coincided with when the turbo was under boost and uh, of course I realized pretty quick what that was going to be that was going to be uh, the bearing in the turbo had let go and I, what I assumed was the compressor wheel making contact with the housing I was right so the turbo was bad enough that I didn't want to try to rebuild it because the housing was pretty well eaten up. So I decided to uh, decide just to replace the turbo. So in went a KC Turbo Stock Plus unit, um, which basically is for basically a stock turbo with a, a Wicked Wheel or Wicked Wheel equivalent, which is exactly what I got rid of, a Garrett with a Wicked Wheel. So put that on there and uh, while I was in there, went ahead and took care of all the other little things, all the clamps, all the boots, all the other little issues that, uh, that crop up on these things. All the connectors been replaced. So as of today, I'm down to a truck with 302,000 miles that has pretty much a new everything under it things really reliable drives and rides super well um, put a uh, put a lift under it uh, well I think I've got like three inches in the front and maybe about a half inch in the rear to get it to set perfectly level and um, had a set of 35 inch tires under my f350 uh, they're 35 by 1250 um, Toyo open countries on uh, I believe they are 20 by 12 moto metal wheels and um, had those on that truck but that truck has been pretty much relegated to pulling my camper and I didn't really enjoy pulling pulling trailers and campers and things with 35 inch tires um, I feel like it's just a little harder on the truck than it ought to be so I put it back on stock wheels and uh, all-terrain tires but of the stock size just to make it a little bit better um, for pulling and stuck those wheels and tires on this truck and it turned out pretty good because you know this thing I can I've got quite a bit of property behind my house so this thing can go up in the woods it can you know haul out firewood it can take off tree limbs it can go to the dump it can go get brush it can pull a trailer and I don't have to worry about it getting dirty or dented up or you know torn up um, hopefully you know I, I'm, I'm at about I think I'm at about 8,000 bucks in this thing so far um, with everything we've done to it which doesn't seem too bad I'll uh, I'm sure that it'll end up lasting a long time I tend to to uh, take pretty good care of my stuff and maintain my things pretty well so I would assume that that this thing ought to last outlast me so anyway I just thought I'd give you guys a ride along check this thing out a little bit appreciate you coming along don't forget to like share subscribe and I'll see you next time